Welcome to Virtual Office Hours, Eight Essential Tips for First-Time Bar Exam Takers, sponsored by the American Bar Association and JD Advising. The Virtual Office Hours series connects you with experts to help you thrive as a law student and prepare for life after law school. We're really excited to have Lisa Klein with us today to provide tips to help you prepare for the bar exam. Lisa Klein is an attorney content creator and coordinator for JD Advising. Lisa tutors students who are preparing for the uniform bar exam and the multi-state professional responsibility exam. Lisa also tutors law students, including students in the JD Advising Scholars Program. Lisa graduated first in her class, summa cum laude, from Mitchell Hamlin School of Law. Lisa scored in the 98th percentile on the North Carolina's UBE. Lisa is a licensed to practice law in North Carolina. And before attending law school, Lisa received her MD from East Carolina University Broadway School of Medicine. Lisa graduated from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill with a Bachelor of Science in Biology. Lisa, we'll turn things over to you now. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to have the opportunity to be with you today. I would like to start with a brief overview of our time together, as well as some basic instructions. First, I will be covering eight essential tips for first time bar takers. The bar exam is a huge undertaking and many students feel overwhelmed as they begin to contemplate preparing for the bar exam. My hope is that by going through these tips, you will feel more confident as you begin your bar exam preparation journey. After we go through the tips together, I will discuss some things that you can do now to prepare for the bar exam. I will be going through a PowerPoint presentation based on the handout that is available to you in the chat. You are welcome to ask questions during the presentation through the Q&A function on Zoom. We have some great panelists, Rosie and Laura from the JD Advising team who are available to answer your questions. Also, I will be answering questions after my presentation. So let's get started. My first tip for studying for the bar exam is to work on memorization. At first, this seems obvious. Everyone knows that you have to memorize a lot of material in order to pass the bar exam, right? While it is true that memorization is critical to success on the bar exam, memorization is a step that many students overlook during their bar exam preparation. Why is that? Well, there are a couple of reasons. First, many bar prep programs do not emphasize memorization. The focus for many bar prep programs is to listen to lectures, answer multiple choice questions, and practice writing essays. There's not a lot of specific direction to memorize outlines. We recommend that students take a three-pronged approach to bar exam preparation. Those three prongs are, first, understanding the law, second, memorizing the law, and third, applying the law. This tip is about memorization, so I'm going to focus on that. However, many bar prep courses and many students focus on prongs one and three. It is easy to see why. Understanding the law tends to involve passive activities, such as watching lectures. Passive activities take less mental energy than active ones. Applying the law is a mixture of passive and active activities. Practicing essays and MPTs are more active activities because you have to come up with an answer on your own or look for it in the file or library. Practicing multiple choice questions can be more passive. It can be pretty easy to flip through a bunch of multiple choice questions on your phone and not really think about what you're doing. But memorization, for the most part, is an active process. No one can memorize the law for you. That is why many courses don't emphasize memorization. It is hard to check memorization off your to-do list. However, memorization is critical for success on the bar exam. The three prongs that I mentioned, understanding the law, memorizing the law, and applying the law, work in a building block function. It is difficult to memorize the law if you don't understand it, and it's really difficult to apply the law if you don't understand or have not memorized it. Because memorization is so important, I recommend that you do not jump directly from watching lectures or even reading through outlines to completing practice problems. 
it is tempting to want to put into practice right away what you have learned after sitting through hours of lectures. However, when students take this approach, they are often disappointed with their results when answering questions. Many wonder, I thought I knew this material. Why am I getting so many questions wrong? Often, the reason is because the student did not take the time to memorize the material. After listening to a lecture or reading through an outline, students often have a general understanding of the material that can give them a false sense of security that they actually know the law. I encourage you not to skip this critical second step and work on memorizing the law first before you dive into practice problems. My next tip is to consider speeding up your lectures in your bar prep course, especially if you are not an auditory learner. As I mentioned on the previous slide, listening to lectures is a largely passive activity. Even though many courses have fill in the blank outlines or worksheets that go along with the lectures, it is still largely a passive activity. So while listening to lectures and other passive activities have their place in bar exam preparation, especially for learning the law, these activities can be time consuming. So to make your study more efficient, consider watching those lectures at one and a half or two times the speed. Tip number three is to memorize one outline per subject. I already explained why memorization is so important for success on the bar exam. So what should you memorize? You should memorize your outlines. Now that sounds straightforward until you realize that many courses provide you with multiple outlines. And some of those outlines are written more like textbooks than outlines, making them difficult to memorize. Choosing which outline to memorize is a critical step in your bar exam preparation. I encourage you to spend time looking at different outlines before you decide which one to choose. Here on the slide, I have a small sample of one of JD Advising's outlines, the MBE Criminal Law and Procedure Outline. As you might be able to see, this outline is in true outline form, making it easy to memorize. This outline also has some images that help make the memorization process fun. Well, maybe not fun, but hopefully less painful. No matter what outline you choose, pick one and stay with it. Your memorization and your overall studying will suffer if you are constantly jumping between outlines, handouts, and notes. Students often feel that they have to read, digest, and try to memorize every piece of bar prep material that comes their way. That is definitely not the case. In fact, you will likely be hurting your chances of succeeding on the bar exam rather than improving them if you take that approach. So spend some time before you pick, before you choose your outline, researching bar prep outlines. Once you find one that works for you, stick to it. Focus your memorization efforts on that outline. My next tip is to use real NCBE, MBE released questions when you study. What do I mean by that? The NCBE, the National Conference of Bar Examiners, is the body that develops and produces the MBE, the MEE, and the MPT. That's a lot of Ms. I will be talking about the components of the bar exam in a later slide. For now, the important thing to know is that the NCBE writes the multiple choice questions that make up the MBE portion of the bar exam. That means that studying MBE questions released by the NCBE is important to success on the bar exam. As you might imagine, the NCBE releases a limited number of these questions, so there are only so many of them available. Because their numbers are limited, all bar prep courses create their own MBE questions for students to study. These questions are fine as a study tool. However, you don't want to limit yourself to course created questions. Many courses do not include real released NCBE MBE questions as part of their course. If your bar prep course does not provide real NCBE questions, you can purchase them separately to supplement your bar course. Tip number five is to consider a personalized study schedule. 
This does not mean that you have to create your own study schedule. Some students do fine by just following their bar prep courses schedule. But some students find that they need to personalize their schedule to meet their particular circumstances. Here, we have provided you with a sample weekly study schedule. This schedule is for nine weeks, but it can be adapted to any length of study. For example, I have altered this schedule to accommodate students who are studying for 18 weeks for the bar exam, for those who are studying four weeks, which I don't recommend, but if you have to, this will work, and just about every time period in between. As you can see, this schedule has the student studying one MBE subject and two MEE subjects per week. So looking at week one in the upper left-hand corner, you can see that the MBE subject for the first week is real property. Then one of the MEE subjects for that week is real property. The reason for this is pretty obvious. If you are already studying real property for the MBE, it makes sense to also study real property for the MEE. Then there's another MEE subject to study, family law. You will notice that every week there's also some MPT practice. This schedule allows the student to study two subjects per week and complete all 14 UBE subjects by the end of week seven. Then weeks eight and nine are for review, taking practice exam and getting ready to take the bar exam. Here, I have provided you with a sample daily schedule. I'm going to go through the schedule in detail in just a moment. But first, I want to make you aware that this schedule assumes a couple of things. First, it assumes that the student is on a nine week schedule. So if you start studying before nine weeks or after nine weeks before the bar exam, your schedule might look different. The other thing that this schedule assumes is that the student is studying full time or close to it. So if you are working or have other responsibilities that prevent you from studying full time, your schedule will likely look different. On that note, I want to mention that if you are working while you are studying for the bar exam or have other responsibilities that prevent you from studying full time, we recommend that you begin your studying a little earlier. By starting earlier, you can give yourself enough time to cover all the subjects without feeling overwhelmed as you might feel if you tried to follow a regular nine week schedule. So knowing all that, let's take a look at the schedule. Recall that I mentioned earlier, the three-pronged approach for bar exam preparation, understanding or learning the law, memorizing the law, and applying or practicing the law. This schedule incorporates all three of those concepts during the week, in fact, every day. For example, starting at the upper left-hand corner of the schedule after breakfast, we have listen to lecture for MBE subject number one. This study time is for understanding or learning the law. The next activity on the schedule is memorize outline for subject number one. This is the second part of studying, the memorization step. The next two activities are complete essays and complete MBEs. This is the application or practice part of studying. This schedule follows the same basic pattern all week including some MPT practice a few times during the week. So returning to tip number five, you can see that there are a number of ways to personalize your schedule to meet your needs. The important thing is that you have a schedule and do your best to follow it. Tip number six is do not rewrite your outlines or retype them verbatim. A lot of first time takers fall into the habit of rewriting their entire outlines. This is not helpful to students because it does not encourage active memorization. This practice is also inefficient. Now, this is not to say that writing is not a productive way to memorize the law, just the opposite. I've had several students who wrote, write elements of a rule over and over again to help them memorize them. If that works for you, I encourage you to employ that technique. That is a very different activity from simply rewriting or retyping your outlines. Rewriting your outlines is a poor time investment that will probably not reap the rewards you are hoping for on the bar exam. 
My next tip is don't try to condense all your outlines into flashcards. Students who make flashcards usually spend a lot of time making the flashcards and then find that they don't have time to review them. I have had students who, despite my advice to the contrary, created flashcards for everything. Students often feel that they are just not studying properly unless they are creating flashcards. Flashcards can become a kind of mental security blanket for these students. These students sometimes end up in resource overload, which is very easy to fall into on the bar exam, even if you don't make flashcards. So please use your outlines as your main source of memorization, like I mentioned earlier. If you do make flashcards, make them for specific topics that you struggle with. Be careful not to fall into the flashcard black hole. My last tip is to remember that your goal is to pass the bar exam, not merely to complete a certain percentage of your course. Spending your time studying, it should be learning the law, memorizing the law, and applying the law. That is the best way to study efficiently for the bar exam. There are no shortcuts to success on the bar exam, but you can study efficiently. Now, this is not to say that completing your bar prep course is not important. If you don't spend time with the material, submit essays for feedback and answer the questions, you are going to have a hard time passing the bar exam. The goal of this tip is to make sure that your focus is on actually learning and memorizing the material and practicing essays and MBE questions not on checking off boxes so you can feel good about your progress through your bar exam, your bar prep course. Okay, so now that I've given you my eight essential tips for first time bar takers, I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about what you can do now to prepare for the bar exam. This first suggestion is if you have not done so already to go ahead and start your bar application as soon as you reasonably can. When I was in law school, someone advised me to start my bar exam application months ahead of time. This was a great piece of advice. Most states require a lot of information on their bar applications. You might think, how long can it take? It can take a very long time. Not only does the application itself take a long time, most states want a lot of documentation. For example, States require your birth certificate, your driving record, and your transcripts, just for starters. Most states want a complete work and residential address history. States also require fingerprinting and background checks. The list goes on and on. States also require applicants to provide the names, and in some cases, letters from character references, the number of which can range from two to three, up to 12. Some states also require interviews as the part of their character and fitness application. Now, every state's bar application process is different, so your state might not require 12 character witnesses or an interview. The point here is that your state bar will ask you for a lot of information that may take you a while to gather. This is a lengthy process that you want to get started on as soon as possible. Another thing that you can do now to prepare for the bar exam is to be aware of the costs associated with the bar exam. Studying for the bar exam is stressful enough. You don't want to be unpleasantly surprised by large unexpected financial burdens. So it is helpful to be aware of these costs so you can plan ahead for them. For example, student loans usually do not cover the cost of the bar exam. Their application and registration fees, and depending on the state, can range from $200 to $1,450. Moral character applications, using California as an example, cost $551. Exam software costs at least $200. Bar prep courses can range from $1,000 to $3,000, even higher. Bar prep supplements, can begin just individually between $100 and $500, and you may use multiple supplements. And then of course there's rent, living expenses, 
airline costs if you need to travel somewhere to take the bar exam and hotel accommodations. Something that is really important to do to prepare for the bar exam is to familiarize yourself with the format and content of the bar exam. I know this seems obvious, but many students jump into studying for the bar exam without really understanding its components and how much each section is worth. The first step is to find out if your state administers the UBE, which is the uniform bar exam, or if they administer a state specific bar exam. One thing to be aware of here, most states that administer the UBE also include a state specific component that applicants must pass to be licensed in the state. That component is different from a bar exam that non UBA states administer. Approximately 80% of the states use the UBE. Some states are in the process of adopting the UBE. Because most applicants will be taking the UBE, I will be discussing the UBE in the next few slides. As I already mentioned, the UBE is administered by the National Conference of Bar Examiners. Three sections make up the UBE, the multi-state bar exam, the MBE, the multi-state essay exam, the MEE, and the multi-state performance test, the MPT. This pie chart shows you how much each component of the UBE is worth. Starting on the right of the chart in the blue, you can see the MBE, which is the multi-state bar exam. The MBE consists of 200 multiple choice questions that are worth 50% of the overall UBE score. You might wonder if you can see on the slide why the slide says 175 questions when I just said there were 200 questions. The reason is that although there are 200 questions on the MBE, only 175 are actually scored. That is because the MBE includes 25 experimental questions mixed in with the regular questions. The NCBE calls these questions pretest questions. You probably won't be able to tell which questions are experimental, so do your best to answer all 200 questions. Moving clockwise around the chart, the next section is in gold. This is the MEE, the multi-state essay exam, which is six essays worth 30% of the UBE. This means that each essay is worth 5% of the total UBE score. Finally, the red section is the MPT, the multi-state performance test, which is worth 20% of the UBE. This section has two performance tests, each of which are worth 10% of the total UBE score. This chart has a lot of information on it, so I'm going to try to break it down for you. Starting on the left, the MEE consists of six 30-minute essays. There are 14 subjects that are tested on the MEE. However, you will not be tested on all 14 on a single bar exam. Because there are only six essays, there are only so many subjects tested per bar exam. Now you might think that there would only be six subjects tested per bar exam. However, some essays combine subjects. So you might see two subjects on a single essay. For example, agency and partnership is sometimes tested with torts. Evidence is sometimes tested with criminal procedure. Conflict of laws is usually, it really is never tested alone and is frequently tested with civil procedure. So you could see anywhere from about six to 10 subjects on the MEE. The following subjects are tested on the MEE. Civil procedure, constitutional law, contracts and sales, criminal law and procedure, evidence, real property, torts, agency and partnership, corporations and LLCs, family law, conflict of laws, decedents' estates, trusts, and secure transactions. The next component is the MPT. The MPT is often the most confusing section for students because it does not contain any multiple choice questions. It does not contain essays, but you will have to write a lot on the MPT. And you don't have to know any law for this section of the UBE. So what do you have to know for the MPT? 
For the MPT, you have to know how to create a legal document, such as a memorandum, a brief, or a letter from a set of facts and some law that are provided to you. One of the most important things to know about the MPT is that you must follow the instructions provided to you on how to create the document that is assigned to you. Some students, especially those who have had previous legal experience, make the mistake of thinking that they know how to write a memorandum or a brief, so they don't need to read or follow the instructions on the MPT. This is a big mistake. I have seen people fail the bar exam largely because they did not follow the instructions on the MPT. The good news is that because you don't have to memorize any law for the MPT, you can do well on this section of the UBE by following the provided directions and practicing the different formats and timing. Finally, the MBE is 200 multiple choice questions from the following subjects, civil procedure, constitutional law, contracts, criminal law and procedure, evidence, real property, and torts. You probably noticed that I repeated seven of the topics that are list tested on the MEE. The good news, that is good news, because although you will approach studying for the MBE and the MEE differently, the subject matter overlaps between those two components for those seven subjects. Another thing that you can do is to get the MPRE out of the way as a way to prepare for the bar exam. The MPRE is the Multi-State Professional Responsibility Exam. Most states require the MPRE for bar licensure. Jurisdictions differ as to the timing required for the taking and passing of the MPRE. For example, in some, some states require a passing score on the MPRE for an applicant just to sit for the bar exam. In other states, you can only take the bar exam one time without passing the MPRE first. So getting the MPRE out of the way is a good way to prepare for the bar exam. The MPRE is administered three times a year in March, August, and November. My last suggestion on how to prepare for the bar exam is to start bar prep early. The amount of information required for the bar exam is overwhelming and students universally wish they had more time to study. By starting bar prep early, you can give yourself more time to learn the material and thus help decrease the sense of feeling overwhelmed. To talk to you about early bar prep services, as well as other services, I would like to introduce you to Rosie, JD Advising's lead account executive. Rosie is an expert on all of JD Advising's products and services, and would be happy to talk with you at any time. Thank you so much for the introduction, Lisa, and hello, everyone. As Lisa mentioned, uh, my name is Rosie. I am the lead account executive at JD Advising, and I just wanted to quickly introduce myself that uh, in case you do have any questions or do end up emailing us or calling us, most chances are you'll be speaking with me. We have lots of resources, lots of free resources that are very helpful, very beneficial to anyone even thinking about the bar exam, let alone getting ready to prep for it. And two of these resources that I quickly just want to make mention of for you guys are our 3L primer course and our early bar prep campaign. The 3L primer course gives you an overview of what the bar exam is and how to best approach it. We talk about techniques for the essay and the multiple choice portions um, of the exam. This is a supplement. Um, we highly recommend that you use it while you're still in law school or about to um, graduate, um, but definitely prior to enrolling in a commercial bar prep course. So again, this is a supplement. It focuses on an overview um, of what the bar exam will look like and what you should prepare for. We also have an early bar prep campaign. Um, this goes through early bar prep tips, MBE questions, and substantive law for five minutes each day. Both of re these resources are free. You can sign up for them on our website. I highly encourage you to. It's not going to cost you anything but some time. 
Um, and like Lisa said, it's never a bad idea to get an early start on any helpful tips that are essentially going to help you succeed. If you have any questions, are not sure where to begin, what resources are available to you, I'm available anytime. We even have an option on our website where you can choose a time that works best for you. And I'd be more than happy to give you a call and help answer any questions you have about all of our resources. I wish you the best of luck in your uh, bar exam journey and look forward to speaking with you soon. Back to you, Lisa. Okay, thank you so much, Rosie. So I'm going to start um, answering some questions and I see already that there have been several questions on a topic that is very familiar to um, bar students and that is test anxiety, or I would say anxiety in general. And so one thing I would like to say about anxiety is that it is very, very common. Even if you have never had anxiety before, um, I think that it is actually probably just almost ubiquitous. Almost everyone has it. So it, that can sometimes be comforting in and of itself to realize that this is normal um, and that this is probably one of the biggest things that you'll ever do in your life is take the bar exam. So no wonder. Um, some things that I think can help specifically with test day anxiety is to try to recreate the environment that you're going to be in taking the test when you're studying. Now, this usually applies as you get a little closer to test day. Um, but for example, last bar administration, I had several students who said they were going to have to take a mask, wear a mask. Um, during the bar exam. Hopefully you won't have to deal with that, but we never know. So that doesn't mean that you have to sit and study for the next, for 10 weeks or nine weeks before the bar exam with a mask on, but you may wanna take some practice tests with the kind of mask that you're going to be wearing for the bar exam. Similarly, if you're going to be using a different computer or anything that you can do to try to get yourself in the type of situation that you're gonna be in to recreate test day will help calm those test day nerves. Students also have anxiety throughout the process of bar prep, not just for test day. And so if you struggle with anxiety, especially if you have had anxiety before starting the bar exam, I encourage you to consider looking into some treatment for that. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to go on medication or that you even need to see a doctor, but definitely Pre-existing anxiety can get worse during bar prep and anxiety tends to be distracting and make it hard for you to settle down and study. So my advice is don't ignore it, try to address it, um, speak with people that you respect, your doctor, other healthcare workers, um, look at some things on the internet, be careful because there's a lot of things out there that are not reliable, but don't just ignore that and hope that it's gonna go away because it is a very real thing. The good news is that it is something that you can overcome and that you can beat um, as you get prepared for the bar exam. And it also looks like there is a question about handwriting versus typing. I'm assuming this means handwriting versus typing your essays and MPTs on the exam. So in general, if you can type, there's an advantage to that. And, and there's several advantages. Um, first of all, most people can type faster than they can write. Um, one of the huge advantages is that you can move things around. For example, I recommend when people are writing their essays to go ahead and write their issue statement headings as early as they can. Um, as soon as they figure out the essays, which I mean, the issues, excuse me, which are often not difficult to find because sometimes they're just written for you as the questions in the MEE. You can go ahead and write those and then start filling in. It's hard to do that when you're handwriting because you don't have the way to, um, to accommodate the space. However, I have a student right now who does not know how to type. He is very insecure with typing and he is going to write the bar exam. And that is fine. Um, he is, his handwriting is very good. I can read his handwriting. Um, but if you do go that route, I recommend that you find out from your um, board of law examiners what type of paper and what type of writing utensil you are allowed to use. So for example, if you have to use a blue book 
or if to use a certain pen, or if you can only use a pencil, whatever it might be, try to find that out ahead of time, because this goes back to my, to my um, recommendation on test day anxiety, that if you start writing your essays the same way that they're gonna have you write them on test day, that is gonna be a tremendous help to you versus if you are writing with a different utensil, with a different kind of paper, and then suddenly test day, you have to use something different. Okay. All right, we'll take a look at the questions here. Okay. Okay, so one question is, um, how early should we start studying for the July 2020 uh, bar exam? And um, so this person says, I'm planning to start in May after finishing my law school finals. Is that too late? Definitely not. That is when most people start studying. And most bar prep courses are designed to have you study from about that time until the bar exam. So I would say that most people do that. So definitely not too late. And definitely it can be challenging to try to study for your law school finals and juggle studying for the bar at the same time. And for most people, that's just not feasible. However, if somehow you find yourself where you have some extra time on the weekends or maybe over spring break or whenever you might have time, I would try to look at some of the tips that I talked about, about um, familiarizing yourself um, and maybe start the course perhaps similar to the one that Rosie spoke about, an early start course. But definitely not too late to start sitting for the bar exam. Um, after law school uh, exams are over. Okay, any suggestions on those who are undecided as to which state to select? Um, are there pros and cons to California UBE? So this is a very individual situation. And of course, a great deal of this decision, if not most of it, uh, depends on where you wanna practice law. Of course, the UBE, those scores can be transferable depending on what your score is. For example, if you get above a certain, I believe 280 or so, depending on what uh, your jurisdiction is, you can be licensed in just about any state um, because some states range from 260 up to 280. Um, that doesn't mean that just if you, if you get a 280 or higher on the bar exam that you can just immediately be licensed anywhere. You have to go through that application process that I spoke about earlier for every state. You have to take their state specific component if they have one, you have to go through their character and fitness. So it's, it's quite an ordeal. But if you're not sure where you're going to be practicing um, and you think you might be practicing in a UBE state, then that might persuade you to take the UBE. However, if you think you're going to be practicing in California, you need to take the California bar exam to be licensed there. Um, if you're just looking to be licensed somewhere um, and it doesn't matter to you, let's say that you're going to be working in some sort of job where you just need a license, then you might consider the UBE just because of the flexibility um, for the future. Okay, next question. As a 1L, is it too early to start planning for the bar exam? what should I start doing this summer to start preparing? Okay, that is a great question. Um, because as a 1L, you are still trying to figure out what law school's about and, and a lot of the subjects. And I, I would say that it's never too early to start planning. It's never too early to start thinking about and familiarizing yourself with the components like we spoke about. It's never too early to start working on things like the practice test and the MPT. Um, the problem with studying too early as in 1L, is that you, you haven't learned the subjects yet. And so it will be very foreign to you um, to start too early. Um, but definitely you could, during your summer, if you're not doing other things like doing an internship or a law review or things like that, if you have that summer free, then definitely doing some reviewing with some bar materials for the, um, the classes that you took during your 1L could definitely help you get a head start. Okay, let's see here. Um, for health issues other than anxiety, are there generally accommodations available? Yes, and um, I'm really glad that someone asked this question because this is so important. If you think that you might be able to get accommodations for anything, and there is a wide variety of things that you can get accommodations for, ADHD, dyslexia, learning disabilities, physical, um, physical elements, all kinds of things, um, do that also very early because that process takes a long time. 
it can really, really make a difference for students who need accommodations to be granted those accommodations. So definitely I would reach out to your local jurisdiction, find out what accommodations are available, find out the process for applying for those. Okay, all right. Is there a registration process that bar takers have to do through the NCBE website itself, or do we just apply through our state bar exam, character fitness, state specific? Okay, so it is through your state, um, your state bar examiners. They will administer the NCBE. The NCBE creates the exam, but it's your local um, board of law examiners that are going to be um, taking your application because you're going to be admitted to their bar. Um, so, and if you have any questions about that, you could probably go on their website and there will probably be things like bar admission, bar exam, and you'll be able to find all that information. That's a great thing to be doing ahead of time so that you're not lost when it comes time to do that. Okay. I don't see any other questions right now. There, anybody else have any questions? Maybe there might be a question in the chat. Let's see here. I think there's a question about foreign law graduates who still need to take additional legal education from an ABA approved law school. How soon can they take the bar? Um, that's going to be something that you're going to need to reach out to your local jurisdiction because they will be able to help you with that. That's going to be very specific to your situation and to your jurisdiction. So the best way is to, um, to reach out to them. Okay, and then I see a question about, uh, wondering about the format. Um, so I talked about the format somewhat in the um, presentation. I'm not sure exactly what, um, what's being asked here. If you are asking about um, whether it's done in person or whether it's done remotely. Um, Oh, okay, can we highlight on the material? So again, that is very dependent on your jurisdiction. Um, it, it just depends. Some jurisdictions will allow you to have, or they will give you actually the packet on a piece of paper. So other jurisdictions, everything is on your computer. So there's nothing that you can write on. Some jurisdictions say you cannot take notes, especially for the essays, you won't be able to be writing. Um, again, every jurisdiction is different. Some will let you, come in with highlighters, some will provide you with highlighters, some will say you can't have a highlighter. So um, I would take a look and spend some time on your Board of Law Examiner's website. They should have that information to, for you. And if it's not on their website, then feel free to email them and give them a call. Okay. What are the thoughts on taking one day off during bar prep? So I think that this can definitely be advantage, advantageous. A lot of students do this and it really helps them to stay um, mentally healthy and to not burn out. And it just, a lot of it depends on your personality and about your schedule. If you are working full time and you only have an hour every day to study and then you have to study a lot on the weekends, taking a whole weekend day off is probably not going to be feasible, unfortunately. Um, most first time takers don't have that problem, thankfully. Um, so as long as that you have personalized your schedule, like I spoke about earlier, in such a way that you can um, get everything done that you need to, then absolutely you can take a day off during bar prep. Other students don't like to do that because they feel that um, they're not doing what they should do. And it depends on your personality type. If you're one of these people that feels like if you're not working all the time that you're, you know, that you get anxiety from that. Um, then taking a day off is not maybe the best idea. But on that note, even if you're one of those people that feels like they have to study all the time, I really encourage everyone to take good care of yourself, both physically and mentally, because we are not machines, we are human beings, and we need to be taken care of. So we have to be sure to get enough sleep. Staying up until three or four in the morning, studying every night is not going to help you pass the bar exam, um, unless you don't have to get up till noon the next day. Um, so be mindful of the fact that you need to sleep, you need to eat, you need to have some time to relax and to spend time with your loved ones. Um, so be sure to try to create that balance. You don't want to be out, you know, partying and doing too much relaxation during the bar exam, 
but you also don't want to deprive yourself of the things that you need to be healthy. Okay, how do you recommend going about taking two separate bar exams? One that is the UBE and the other is for non-UBE. Um, so I would assume that you would be taking these at different times, um, that you wouldn't be taking those at the same time. So I think that you would have to know, I would have to know more about what your motivation is and which um, non-UBE exam that you would be taking. Um, because it just depends on the material. Some, some non-UBE states like Louisiana, their material is quite different from the UBE. And so in that case, it might be better for you to take the UBE first because most, most law schools tend to teach material that is similar to the UBE, get that out of the way, then move on to something that may be um, a little different. Okay, one of the slides said pack for the bar. Are most exams in big cities only? Well, we need to plan for travel and hotel. Okay, so again, that depends. For example, um, I live in North Carolina and everyone has to go to Raleigh, which is the capital, to take the bar exam. So it's only one place in the state that it is given. So I live a couple of hours from Raleigh. So when I took the bar exam, I had to pack and go there and stay in a hotel and, and all of that. So that's definitely something that you want to plan for. So take a look again at your state's uh, website and see where the location is. It usually is in uh, a large area because they have to have facilities to accommodate a large number of bar takers. Great question. I have heard that a good rule of thumb is to put about 400 hours into bar prep before the exam. Do I agree with that? Okay, so that number comes from this little math equation, which is 40 hours a week times 10 weeks. That gives you 400 hours, okay? So that is just a ballpark. Um, if you are someone who um, is extremely efficient, maybe you're a very fast reader, maybe you assimilate information really quickly, you may not need that much time. If you are someone who is perhaps on the slower end of things, if you struggled some with the topics in law school, if you find yourself wanting to, um, for example, have private tutoring, other things that may take more time, you may wanna be on the, the uh, you know, beyond 400 hours. I wouldn't get too caught up of, oh my gosh, I'm only at 360 hours. Um, the, the idea is that, and just like I spoke about on one of the slides, the idea is not to check off the boxes and say, okay, I completed 400 hours or I completed all of my, my course. It's, do you know the material? Have you reviewed the material? Have you learned it? Have you memorized it? And have you applied it? And as you go through your course, you will get a sense of your level of preparation. As you submit your essays to your graders, as you um, work on your timing, as you work on your questions and as you take practice tests, all of those things will help you gauge where you are in the process. Okay, um, let's see. I see a question that just says, not sure if I see any other questions right now. Okay. Okay, maybe this was the format of the MEE and the MBE, is that right? About what person had the formatting question earlier? So even if that's not the question, I'll talk about it um, anyway. So the format for the MEE is that, and this is a good thing to talk about anyway, is that most states you have all six essays back to back. So you have 30 minutes for each essay. So as you can imagine, it really means you have just a little bit less than 30 minutes per essay because you have to turn the page or click or do something to get to the next essay. Um, so the essays are right on top of each other. You have three hours, unless you have accommodations or other um, different situation to finish those essays. So that is something to keep in mind when you are practicing the MEE is not only to practice individual 30 minute essays, but to also practice two, three, four, maybe even a whole six essays right on top of each other so that you, your mind gets used to the timing involved because timing is really critical on bar exam. Okay, I don't see any other questions at this time. Great. Thank well, you, everyone. 
we want to thank everyone for joining us today and a special thank you to Lisa Klein and the entire team at JD Advising. Uh, visit ABA, Law ABA for Law Students.com for more information about upcoming programs and bar prep. Take care, everyone.